Do you know who produced the first Titanic? Oh, you guys are gonna have who, a I'm so who produced it? Who produced the who produced the, 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 the movie ship or the movie? Titanic. Oh, you're gonna love this, Jeremy. By the way, <laughs> you should get this. Yeah, I mean the film was produced by John Landau, right? Nope. There was one Titanic before that. Same exact thing. Hmm. But someone produced it first. Tom, do you know the answer to this or no? Do you know the answer to this? I should. Are you ready to flip out? Okay. And you're gonna flip the F out. You ready? What if I told you? It was Adolf Hitler. What? Go type in hit. Go t- that, Rob. All I want you to do is what? go type in Titanic movie 1943. Watch this. And Vinny, you just That's prompted crazy. this thought. I wasn't even thinking about this. That's go crazy. right there. Okay, zoom in so we can read this together. Titanic's a 1943 German propaganda no. film made during the World War II in Berlin by Tobis Productions for UFA, depicting the catastrophic sinking of the Armist Titanic in 1912. This was the third German language dramatization of the event uh, following a silent film release in 1912, just four months after the sinking of the British German film. Titanic's was commissioned, bingo, by Nazi propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels with the intent of showing not only the superiority of German filmmaking, but also as a propaganda vehicle that would depict British and American capitalism as being responsible for the disaster, Mm -hmm. the addition of an entirely fictional heroic German officer, Peterson to the ship's crew was intended to demonstrate the superior bravery and selflessness of the German men as compared to British officers. The whole movie is about painting Nazi soldiers as heroes, as strong, as powerful, America and Britain as weak, and the money came from Adolf Hitler. The power of making movies can change elections, can change presidents, can cause wars, can cause new policies, oh, yeah. can cause a lot of different things. Oh, movies, music, if you think about it, like like Taylor Swift doing her thing. I, I know she she wasn't she's not political, Jeremy. She did say something political during Hillary time, but I, I was telling people this, don't be surprised. She opens her mouth and tells these people her her Swifties to vote. That is such Power oh, yeah. and it influences and it changes the world. Well, listen, Stalin was heavily involved in Hollywood uh, in the 40s and 50s. It's how we ended up with Ronald Reagan. You know, he was the head of uh, SAG and he was so opposed to the influence of Stalin. I mean, the the people who are willing to wield tools to make you other than you are are keenly aware of the power of the tools that you take for granted. That's it. Yep. The, because they're the one looking they're the ones looking for those weapons. And you're naively not. And so we we've, we've seeded some of the greatest most powerful mechanisms ever created to people who are our ideological enemies because of naivety. You know, it's interesting. Some of these case studies of media are living in uh, plain sight. In the 70s, remember, uh, soap operas were very big. The afternoon, there was nothing much on except soap operas. General Hospital, Young and Restless, One Life to Live. You can go and take a look at them, take the tour of NBC, and it's like the history of the growth of the soap opera. But did you also, in terms of social contagion, do you know when soap operas would invent diseases, you would have Mm. thousands of housewives that would go to their doctor and actually but we're, we're dealing with psychosomatic symptoms that they're bringing on themselves about fictitious diseases that they saw in a soap opera. And we looked at that comically, but really that was a foreshadowing of how easily we were all right. led by media. That's the right. power of media. By the way, you know what the movie John Q did to me? The movie John Q, I don't know if you've seen John Q with Denzel. Denzel oh, and phenomenal. Yeah, Kevin really Connolly's in it. There's a bunch of guys in it. It's a very good movie. If you watch the movie John Q, by the time you're done, it was the perfect timing for Obamacare to be accepted. Wow. Because John Q. I did you, see John Q. I remember yeah, the, kid's like, my, the kid. My, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't oh, bury yeah. my kid. My kid, my Babe. son buries me, right? That That's whole right. scene when he's yeah. getting That's emotional. Right. Yeah, you, you. And, and don't show this, by the way, Rob. I mean, the, the people in the back. It's just uh, So John Q, the movie, uh, shows the fact that they need a heart uh, uh, transplant for the kid. And they have to spend uh, some, what, uh, quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. No, it's, a, it's a big amount of money. And they're like, yeah, we can't cover that. We can't do that with the insurance. So that got the average person to watch the movie and said, that's not fair. That's not mm-hmm. this. So it stays. There's so much power in movies. Movies and music can destroy an entire civilization. That's how powerful it is. So, and, and by the way, what was this prompted by? You said something about, you know, when you're reading the stats, one out of four and, you know, 3,000 percent and all these 4, things that you're giving, 4,000 yep. percent. Yep. You know, what my problem is with the Pope. Here's what my problem was with the Pope. 
and it's the same thing problem I have when I go and talk to some other, you know, Christian, you know, pastors or different people that are calling for, you know, business marketing consulting is you're too tolerant. You're, mm-hmm. you, you, you're too tolerant with wanting to uh, compromise your values and principles and standards. You know what was one of my difficult interviews I ever did that was so painful for me when I did this interview? I was within 30 minutes. I'm like, man, I, I, I'm, I don't want to do this interview anymore. Mike Ditka. And let me tell you why Mike Ditka. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know Mike Ditka, you know, Chicago Bears. Oh, you yeah. Know. Hey, here's a quarter. Go talk to someone who cares. Yeah. I don't want to talk to you. I would much rather talk to that guy right there. He was the best, you know, what do you call it, post-game interview guy. My, he's maybe the go to post-game interview. I, so. oh, yeah. I freaking loved watching this guy. And I interview him, and I asked him a question about Colin Kaepernick because it was that time when he got fired from ESPN for making comments about Kaepernick. I don't know if you remember this. And, and he says, you know, maybe I was too hard. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was too tough. Maybe, I'm like, no, you were not, bro. You were <laughs> right. Like, yeah. I'm trying to, as a fan, to say, no, don't let them do this to you. You were right. You're a leader. We need more people like you. We need you to stay strong. We don't need you to cave. We need you to stay like, you know, uh, uh, what's the word where somebody can get you to bend and apologize, go on a freaking apology tour. No, you were right. His wife is sitting right next to us while I'm doing the interview. You know, I think we need more people that are sitting there saying, look, man, I love you guys. I don't agree with you. Yeah, This is not right. I'm not tolerant to it. This doesn't mean I don't love you. This doesn't mean you and I can't have a conversation together. This doesn't mean we can't have dinner together. You know, some people say, well, Pat, you know, you're anti-Muslim and you're anti this and you're anti this. Let me say something most people don't know that they need to know. I'm Armenian. I'm a Syrian. Okay. And I'm a Christian. My chef, who's in my house every day. How many days a week? I love Five days a week. He cooks for all of us. You ready? He's Turkish and he's a Muslim. Most people don't know this story. I don't brag about it. I don't need to brag about it. I love this guy. He's amazing to my kids. We have the best conversations together. When we first did the interview, he's like, you know, I'm Turkish. I'm like, you know, I'm Armenian. <laughs> yeah, I know. I said, do you, do you want to hurt me? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I said, I don't have any desire for you to do anything to you either, man. If I get along with you, we can sit there and talk. Great. We can have our differences. We can have the conversation. I'm a Muslim. No problem. All good. We'll sit there and have the conversation. He has different positions, all this stuff that's going on. I think there's a difference between having love and still being able to disagree. So I don't like that a leader as big as him. There isn't anybody bigger than the Pope. Joel Osteen's not bigger than the Pope. We don't have a Billy Graham today. There's no modern-day Billy Graham going around baptizing 210 million people. He's got a lot of influence behind him, and I actually don't agree with the positions he's taken. And I think he's being too tough. And just just to throw this out there, I know Italians from Italy. You think they're happy about what he's doing? No, you think I mean, the Italy is one of the most it, conservative countries in Europe. Jeremy, I was just going to say, the people that I know that are like, hey, I think they're like anti everything that he's doing and they're furious at what he's doing. Furious. I, go ahead, Tom. You, you know, the history of presidential approval ratings agree with you 100% on the topic of leadership against a clear backdrop. Presidential approval ratings rise when the president is taking a firm stand against a clear backdrop. And it's never hmm. been social. It's never been social. Oh, the red wave didn't happen in the last election because of abortion. Well, it was a hell of a lot more than that. You know, did that help? No, but there was a lot more to it. You take a look at W's approval rating and Clinton's approval rating when they had clear backdrops that they were against and their approval rating was up. And then when they ran to the center, they either got, yep. you know, they, they, the, the approval rating slipped. And, and Clinton's approval rating wasn't slipping because people were appalled that he had, you know, uh, an affair and what happened happened. They they were not inspired against a clear backdrop. The best place to go look at it is last week. The Argentine people are not insane. They are not. They saw a clear choice against a very clear backdrop. And you can see that the populace runs to that. And so you can boil a a uh, frog in a pot slowly, but when the frog is at the point of being cooked against a clear backdrop, that's when the, the voters will respond. And I, I think I think the Pope is just meandering through social social dynamics. I think he's on like a like a photo tour. Yeah, he's a he's a seeker friendly Pope, something that you typically associate with 
uh, Protestants, right? This sort of seeker-friendly American Christianity movie, movement. And that, that is what he seems to be. I, I'm agreeing with you to your point. I mean, once you're against a clear backdrop, the people will follow yeah. because they'll mm-hmm. say, that's my guy. And by the way, no, that's, that's what cool. the Dems don't understand <clears throat> about Trump. But by the, He's so clear. Let me give you the other side, though. That's also not what the leaders on the other end don't understand that they have to stand up and have backbone and yep. not freaking bend every damn time they fear losing something. Like you know, you know, you said you said uh, the 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 scene with the you, your friend, the two girls, the president, who I have an F two, this this that whole thing that you were talking yep. about, right? In that moment, your dream may have been, I want to get an Oscar, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. That dream of a 12-year-old kid, Lubbock, where are you from? What part yep, of Texas? Just outside of Lubbock. Just outside. Uh, 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 Garza? What was the thing about the, uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. The Garza Theater. Yeah. So so this is a kid that has a dream, and now you're a grown man. You're going into, you're having a meeting with people that you want to have, and then that happens. In that moment, you have to make a decision. Values, principles, am I willing to compromise or not? It's a very hard place to be, but we need more people that are intolerant with values and principles, yet loving, gentle, able to give their argument and allowing other people to, or, to agree or disagree and go do your own thing. I don't care if you disagree. Fine. I still respect you, but this is my position. You don't want to do anything about it. Salute to you. Love you. But this is where I stand with this, and I'm not willing to compromise. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.